Hey guys, Inkidu here, and this is going to be a brief overview of my level 79 Frostblades character that I have made for Harbinger League. So, I decided to go Frostblades because I had never done so before. It sort of looked cool, it sort of looked fun, I wanted a League starter, and I knew that with the Threshold Jewels it makes a really big difference. So, what Threshold Jewels am I talking about? I am talking about these, the Fights for Survival. So these are now cheap, what may have been 5 or 10 or 15 Chaos in the past. You can get for 1C or you get one of them directly from the Act 5 quest. So what this allows you to do is get a lot of utility. Frost Blades increased projectile speed. Projectile speed in this game basically means projectile distance. And the secondary portion of Frost Blades is indeed a projectile. So that ends up scaling quite well and allows you to clear out some nice packs. So we went a Ranger because I wanted to get some Frenzy charges. And here's in general how the tree went. I went down into Evasion and Life, into Heart of Oak for uh, Stud and Avoidance and Life Regen. Went into Aspect of the Panther. Uh, the block chance is negated because we end up going acro, but. It's still a good Fizz cluster, and we needed to go east here in the tree anyway. Weapon Artistry, for the same reason. Uh, Winter Spirit, 20% of physical converted to cold damage. 20% of physical converted to cold damage. And Frost Blades itself is a base 60% of Fizz damage converted to cold. So you were a 100% cold build. And we ended up dual wielding a sword, so we got Sword Crit. I'm starting to get the crit here. Evasion, Phase Acro. Frenzy Charges, Blood Drinker, left through Nullification, up Cold Hearted, Crit, and down. And then we go east, into, or rather west, into the uh, Duelist part of the tree here. The, the biggest amount of crit I was able to get here is Twin Terrors in this. It ends up being along the path that we wanted to take anyway. There was no nodes over here that we wanted, so this ends up being, you know, 125% crit while dual wielding. It's quite a lot. Uh, Fangs of Frost gives you more cold damage with weapons and pen. Uh, this is the only mana leech node I need, which is quite nice. Another fight for survival jewel over here. And then I needed some in little mana regeneration, never goes the wrong way. So this is a level 79 character. It's not finished, but as of recording this, I believe it's like the afternoon of day four of the league, so it's still pretty new. And let's take a look at the gear real quick. So we got a belly. Uh, this ends up being a good chunk of life you know, 500 or so, but I mean, you could very easily stick in a 6 link for more damage and just, you know, eat that extra four or 500 life, but the belly is by no means necessary. It's just I had had a prophecy, so I got the belly. Uh, we're dual wielding Scavias. I got these on day two of the League for one chaos apiece. They were quite cheap, and swords as a whole, well, Frostblades is a powerful skill and it's a well-known skill and it's not like it flew under anybody's radar. A lot of people that were going frost blades went claws. So I wanted to go swords and I tested this character out in standard beforehand and it ended up being quite quite strong even just with two pretty junky swords. But the fun part here is crit is still kind of hard to get. You're using a base six sword. So 80% increased crit strike chance when in main hand. The fizz all that stuff doesn't matter. Three green sockets being 30 crit multi is actually pretty good. Our gem setup is frost blades, melee fizz, multi strike, and elemental damage with attacks. So you could be using added cold, you could be using cold pen, you could be using added lightning, you could just use whatever the heck you want when you're leveling, but as soon as you get multi strike, this skill starts to feel good because then you're going to start to auto target. Click over here and a monster that's over here will eventually be hit by frost blades. And because we're dual wielding, we get some attack speed, attack damage buffs, stuff like that. And then my last gem was increased crit strikes. If I get a six link, um, I certainly have a lot of options. I can go crit multi, I can go cold pen, I can go added cold, I can go ice bite. Um, if I don't give a damn about the freezing and the shattering, I can go elemental focus. That'd be the largest DPS increase, but I do like freezing and shattering. Um, other than that, so it's I mean, these were self-found, that was self-found, that was self-found, and that I bought for maybe five chaos. Just the crit multi and the life, and I needed a little bit of strength at the time, and I've since uh, dropped that node in the tree. I still have that. It's, you know, it's, it's not a perfect tree, and I'm only level 79, but 
getting these three coming down, getting this, um, you know, and then, you know, some jewel sockets, stuff like that, and dropping an it node. All of that would be very, very good for me. So, really wearing a lot of armor gear on an evasion character. Uh, we got Whirling Blades, Blood Magic, Faster Attacks, Fortify. Um, cast on damage taken and feeble, mortal call, increased duration. I'm going to end up taking this out. It's not really needed anymore. I'll show you why. Uh, frostbite, frost bomb, increased duration. Again, this isn't needed. I'll show you why. Ice golem, herald of ice, hatred. The reason is this. I spent all of my chaos to get these gloves. Life tri res and temporal chains on hit gloves. Temporal Chains slows enemies down. On the Wikipedia page, it tells you 25% or t just about 25% for 11, 11 Temp Chains on hit. But it feels like a hell of a lot more than that because you're factoring in all of your chills and your freezes as well. And monsters that are chilled or frozen have an increase in the time that they're chilled and frozen because of the Temp Chains curse. So uh, we got uh, Seething Divine, uh, Insta Bleed Flasks are always good. Long Hail Freeze, uh, Increased Duration Basalt, Increased Duration Stib Knight for the Smoke Cloud, and Increased Duration Crit. So, what are we at? We are at 17k without auras and stuff like that, and just about 50% chance to crit with each hand, 300 multi. It's pretty solid. Ends up being pretty solid. Chance to hit 86%. That's not too much of a surprise, so let's activate these auras and our accuracy and crit little golem and we are at 26 which is not shabby at all and 88 percent so uh, I'll show you a little bit of the character in action here and go pop into a map so as you can see the character is not that bad um, Frostblades itself is quite quite strong so here's what I was talking about with the physical and the projectile so this portion that's about three feet in front of your character is the melee portion, air quote. That's the part that gets affected by your fight for survival jewels. And then the actual blades that come out after that attack splits off the enemy, those are the blades of the frost, if you will. Those are the frost blades themselves. So, oh, I almost forgot our ascendancies. It's pretty simple. If you're going raider, you're doing it for this reason. Attack speed, frenzy, charge. Uh, buffed up frenzy charges and then dodge and then eventually I'll be able to get this which is nice immune to elemental ailments I can switch out that flask and increased uh, elemental damage would be really great but you see the uh, the temp chains on hit keeps you pretty safe I had the choice between this or elemental weakness and I was still undecided on a six link and I thought maybe I'd run cold pen so I didn't want to get uh, Elemental Weakness and then Cold Pen because I would be way, way over the cap. But you see, even with just bosses that just charge up in your face, even with a pretty moderate 50 crit character, it's still usually enough to keep them controlled. With full frenzies, um, you know, just shy of 50 grand, let's say 49, which ends up being quite a bit of damage. So let's look at this really quick. We have Cold Pen. 30, an additional cold pen of 38. So we have 38% cold penetration. Keep in mind that a 2020 cold penetration gem, I think, is 49%. So we're most of a cold pen gem. We're, we're le like, let's say, at level 15 cold pen gem or something like that, just as it stands, just on a 5 link. So that was part of the reason why I considered this to be a budget character don't have to run Blood Rage, you don't have to degenerate yourself. You get two one chaos swords and a whatever five link and you can go do maps. Right? It's really solid. The temp chains on hit gloves, they're just added flavor. I just wanted to work in a curse somehow, some way. And all I'm doing right now is just holding down right click, right? And anything that runs at me is temp chains and frozen and everything else. It ends up being a pretty safe playstyle, and I don't even think I've hit a potion this entire map here yet, but let's uh, see if we could get into the boss and see what's what. Oh, I get some harbingers, throw it on the frost bomb. So because we're temp chainsing, we don't want to be manually cursing anymore, which is why I was talking about losing the enfeeble and everything else. 
but as you see it's pretty safe even for these little harbinger guys but the frost bomb is another 20 percent penetration so then we're at about 50 percent so uh, it ends up being pretty good pretty safe overall and that's just my leech catching up and now and again you sort of sweep left and right now and again don't stand in the middle of everything and it's uh, usually more than enough to keep you safe and keep enemies frozen and stuff like that. I had done um, a few, you know, monster cold resist, 60%, 70% maps, stuff like that, and it's shitty. It's not good, but I mean, it's not the worst thing ever. And again, no flasks, no nothing like that, and this boss is actually pretty shitty, so just multi-strike, like it goes everywhere. It'll target all these little guys, so what I like to do is throw down a frost bomb, Hit 3, 4, and 5 in my flasks to make myself harder to hit, more physical resistant. And I uh, get the crit going, then frost bomb again, 4 and 5. Keep that stipnite up. Keep uh, keep him and everything else cursed and frozen. Then he goes down. This is not in any way, shape, or form a base tanking character. That's a great example. I don't know actually you know what hit me there. Because uh, that, that uh, rock guy was already dead. But um, it's certainly a character that can do some things with the proper use of flasks and evasion and dodge and stuff like that. I think even more effective than a belly ultimately would be a uh, just a really nice evasion chest since we have a decent amount of increased evasion. And uh, that would end up helping out the character a lot more than just a belly of the beast would. But it's really been a few years since I had made a PoE video, and it's it's not like I've not played the game. You know, it's every new league that comes out, I usually get at least two characters to 90. Um, and I've learned some things along the way, and I just was sort of wanted to share this character because I like the way it came together, and uh, I felt like it had some, some interesting stuff here. So, uh, yeah, for the most part, this is the Frostblades character. And... Um, there's more to come. Thanks.